Come on in. Howdy, boss. Hey, Mike. How's it going out there? Oh, it's working really hard out there, sir. Just had uh, one of the neighbors come by, drop off a deer, and went ahead and signed their deer tag. They're pretty happy. Also, I got Smokey in the back on the North 40. He's raking the rocks right now, doing a heck of a job. We got the rest of the crew over at the barn. Looks like they're going to have that all finished up and painted in about two days or so. Well, that sounds swell, Mike. Why don't we break for lunch? And at 1,300 hours sharp, before we go out and do those hydrant inspections, we'll head on out to escape country and do some map training. That would be great, boss. I just went ahead and changed the tires on 6470 and went through all the oils on the rigs. I'd really like to get a chance to get up that road, seeing how we had a lot of rain this last season. Well, that'll be great. Hey, one more thing. I'm all out of carbon paper. Do you mind putting that down on the supply list before you go? Will do, sir. Um, by the way, the boys and I are pretty thirsty. Wondering if it'd be okay if we'd have some of the waters from the last fire we were on. Absolutely. Go ahead and take one. I got a whole case in the back. Thank you. Me and the boys are real appreciative of this, sir. You're welcome. Hey, boss. That two-track wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. And the new tires really made a huge difference, don't you think? They did work swell, Mike. Hey, this looks like a really good spot to do our training. Let's go over the parts of the compass. First are the base plates, these clear pieces right here. They have different scales on them, several different scales, because not every map is always the same scale. The next part on this particular compass is the sighting mirror. This helps you to acquire your bearings with a little more accuracy. This compass over here is one you will find in your belt weather kit. The next part is the index line, which is right here and right here. That is used for acquiring your bearings. This is called the direction of travel arrow. You point that in the direction that you're going to travel or in the direction that of the bearing you're going to acquire. On this compass, it ends up being the part of the sighting mirror. This round part is the bezel or compass housing. It has two degree graduations all the way around from zero to 360 degrees. The red arrow, this is called the magnetic needle. The red always points to magnetic north. We're gonna call this red Fred. This other arrow you see here is called the orienting arrow or sometimes referred to as the declination arrow. On this mirrored compass, it happens to be adjustable. On this compass, it's not adjustable. So those are the parts of the compass. All right, so this is our typical seven and a half minute series topographic map. As you can see down here is our magnetic north and our true north designation. This says, roughly 12 and a half degrees. So what we need to do is we need to set our declination arrow on this particular compass to 12 and a half degrees. So Mike, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to put the north indicator right in line with the index line. I've went ahead and set the declination arrow, also known as the shed, to 12 and a half degrees on the compass. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna place the compass on the map. I place the edge of the compass along the straight edge of the map. Now, to orient the map to true north, all I have to do is spin the map and the compass together as one until I put red Fred 
in the shed. Red Fred is now in the shed. My map is oriented to true north. Hey boss, I grabbed the compass off of 6470. I don't see how you can adjust the declination on this one though. We're going to put the north indicator right in line with the index line. We'll place the compass just like we did before. The base plate parallel to a vertical line on the map and we will rotate the map until we put red thread where the shed should be. The map is now oriented to true north. You can see that the red needle is now pointing to 12 degrees. When we place the compass with the adjustable declination arrow on there and we put red thread in the shed, everything is aligned. I'd like for you to show me how to take a simple bearing. We can do that. Do you see that tree on top of the hill over there? Yeah, the one right over there. I do see it. That's right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our compass with our siding mirror and we'll do it with the other one too so you can see both ways. You're going to line up the tree in the notch of the siding mirror. Okay? You're going to look through the notch and get the tree so it lines up in the middle of the notch. And then you're going to rotate the compass housing until you put red thread in the shed. And then when you have red thread in the shed, you can pull it down and read your compass heading. So let me show you the other one. This one won't be quite as accurate because you can't look right through that notch. So now you have to kind of hold it down here and you have to kind of guess. Take the direction of travel arrow and kind of point it right towards the bush and then spin the dial until you put red thread in the shed or where the shed should be which is 12 and a half degrees for where we are. That sounds easy enough. And there you go. So with the uh, compass that has the siding mirror, mirror and the adjustable declination arrow, we're able to get a really good accurate reading of 76 degrees. The compass without the siding mirror or the adjustable declination, we ended up with 70 degrees, so that's a difference of six degrees, and that could be significant when you're drawing this out on the map. I can see that. Okay, Mike, so we identified that bush up on that peak over there. Now we want to find out where that bush is on this map. So to do that, we need to know where we are. Well, we took Portola Parkway, and we took a left on Jeffrey Road. We know we took Jeffrey Road all the way to the two track, and we got up to the top of the plateau. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess we're about right about here on the map. That's right, Mike. Keeping Red Fred in the shed, place the compass on the map with the edge of the base plate on our known location and draw a line along the straight edge. The X marks our location and you can see where the line intersects the tree on the peak. Okay, Mike, so let's review. We learned what the parts of the compass were how to orient a map to true north, and how to take a simple bearing and plot it on a map. Gee boss, I wonder what they'll have in the future to make this quicker and easier. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to California. Don't forget your sunglasses. Hey Mike. Hey boss, how are you? Good, just got done with the uh, incident briefing and of course they're all out of the IEP map so we're gonna have to just make do. You're not gonna believe this, but technology has come a long way in 30 years, Cap. Yeah? So check this out. This little guy right here, you know what that's called? Uh, no, what is that called? It's called a QR code, believe it or not. So what we do is, we grab our nice little iPad, we hit the code reader, we just scan it right over, can you see that? Look you see that. the map you're looking at right there? It opens there? up right up. Wow. And then you see the little blue dot right there? Yep. Go ahead. Go like this. And What do you see? That looks just like this flat area we're standing in. That's right. There's the water right there. Here's the water on the map. Very good. I like that. Right. I'm going to let you borrow this for a little while. Perfect. Now I can't get you lost. That's right. Okay.